Hi there. Um, I'm going to try and do a video to try and explain a couple of things I've been thinking about. Um, just to sort of try and explain what thoughts I've been having and, and where it's leading me to. Not that I think anybody would actually be interested in listening to it, but just to, just to share with you really the um, journey that I've been taking that life sort of synchronistically pulled me into certain bits of information that is, is quite um, interesting and in following through. The first thing I want to read you is this article in a book that I found in a charity shop about fairies, and it says here, Fairies, in truth, are very beautiful beings and never mean real harm. They are not malicious in any way, and they have a very different way of looking at life than we humans do. <clears throat> Part of what they do is to copy the archetype patterns they are shown. This is how they know what shapes and colours to paint the flowers. As the human and nature kingdoms are drawing closer together, they are sometimes tempted to pattern after what we humans do, and when they see something, especially a pattern that looks like it might be fun or exciting, they will copy it. So hold that thought and just think about chemtrails. Now, I do believe that the majority of these these chemtrail planes are fake planes, probably consisting of orbs, or they are manifested into shape-shifting patterns. Now, you might think, well, what's that got to do with fairies? What's that got to do with us? And what's that got to do with um, where we are at this point in time? Then, on the 11th of October, I found this article in the paper, which I can read to you, um, about a brain scientist who didn't believe in fairies or the afterlife or anything like that because he was a sceptic neurosurgeon. To cut a long story short, he was struck into a coma after contracting a very rare form of bacterial meningitis, it says here. He fell into a seven-day coma in which the part of his brain that controls thought and emotion shut down. While doctors and family hovered over his bed, increasingly convinced he would never recover, Dr Alexander claims he was somehow transported to a palace of clouds, or a place of clouds, sorry. There, a beautiful blue-eyed woman answered his unspoken thoughts. Now, there's a whole load of this. I don't want to bore you with pages and pages of reading. But I just want to show you, read you one little bit that is particularly interesting. He he basically started off, he felt, as an earthworm. He knew that roots were above him, and then he sort of was pulled out of the earth by magical sort of sounds and music. Um, but I'll just read you this. The next thing he knew, he was flying over a meadow. He couldn't speak and had no awareness of his body. He couldn't see his arms or legs, but was simply a speck on a butterfly wing, along with millions of other butterflies in a swirling river of life and colour. They fluttered among trees and flowers that exploded into bloom as they passed. It's like a Disney film. Below him were waterfalls, pools and indescribable colours, and above him were clouds, big puffy pink-white ones that showed up sharply against the deep blue-black sky. Now listen to this. Far above the clouds were flocks of transparent, shimmering beings making arcs of gold and silver across the sky. Does that sound familiar? Now, there's a whole load of that, and I'll, I'll try and put a link. I don't know if I can find this online. This is in the paper, but if anybody wants to look it up, if, if, if you are a sceptic, it says his name here was Ebden Alexander, and this is from Tom Leonard, the um, New York sort of person who's written about it, and it's in the Daily Mail on Thursday, October the 11th, 2012. So just to conclude here, because I don't want to be too waffly and, and long-winded, the only thing I would like to say is this. So does it mean that... What we are seeing in our own reality is what we want to see. And are they reflecting back to us archetypes that they see? If we are a destructive, malevolent race, sort of, you know, ruining the countryside, ruining the world with pollution, does that get reflected back to us in fake, uh, fake planes or real flame, planes that people think are spraying chemicals on us? Um, can we create our own, re our own reality? And is it the case that if we think that um, if we think that we're going to be being sprayed on by the government chemicals and things, does that create our reality? Or is it the case that if we think that we're living in a magical world that's now becoming more sort of um, closer to us as the veil thins, that that is also what we are reflected in seeing? If we think that you know we're in a magical world and it's and it's light beings sort of showing us things high in the sky is that what we see 
Do we create our own reality that we live in? I don't know, but an interesting thing as well is, did you see that video that Mr. Two Tough Two did a few weeks ago about frequencies? And he showed there that in one frequency, it just looked like chemtrails spraying across, well, I think he was on a, a sheet of um, glass or, or polystyrene or something, or not polystyrene, I don't know what he was on a sheet of. Anyway, this is all very strange, it's all to do with frequencies. And I believe that if we sort of put out positive things and we believe that things above us are benevolent towards us, that's going to give us a positive reality, a positive existence. Whereas alternatively, if we, if we think, oh, it's terrible and we're, we're being victims of, of the government spraying on us and all this, that's also going to give us a, um, a reality, living in that frequency. I'm not saying that, you know, it's probably wrong to, to do something about... Um, issues that there may be with the government and do petitions but does it make any difference or is it cleverer to actually do our own thing in our own way and is that the true nature of the age of Aquarius for example when I was young I used to be quite political um, but I soon realised that all it actually did was end up winding me up something chronic so I sort of started to do my own thing in a little subversive way I'll just tell you about that I've got a cloth nappy business which I've had now for 11 years and in my own way, when I started that, that was my little bit of being subversive because the whole mainstream shops and everything just wants to buy disposables, stuff them in the ground. They can take years and years and years to decompose. We would still have Victorian nappies buried in the ground and further back, almost, I have heard, up to 500 years. We'd have Henry VIII's generation of nappies in the ground if they did the same thing. Cloth nappies has got to be the way to go. In my own little way, I'm doing my little bit by sort of getting everybody to, to use them um, you know, we are now the, well, we won't go on about cloth nappies, that's just diversifying too much. But all I'm saying is, you know, we can do our own thing. Since I did the video about um, our chemtrails, a reflection of us, I've tried to start using natural cleaning products in the home. I mean, I've still not got as far as natural with everything. I've stopped using bleach. Um, I've put all the chemical cleaners I had in a bag and I'm trying to devise the best washing up liquid at the moment. I have to say that I'm still using up um, the dishwasher tablets. I haven't got as far as dishwasher stuff yet, but I'm trying not to use the dishwasher very often. You know, I'm doing my bit. And one last final thing I'll say. I don't know if I have to top it off the end of the video because it just might sound too crazy. But about the fairies, I don't know about you, but when I was little, I actually did definitely believe in fairies. Not until I was about three and a half, we moved to a different house. Before that, we lived in a shop in the town. Um, but then we moved to a house with a garden, and I can remember distinctly being sure that they lived in cracks in the pavement. I remember being quite confused one day when I couldn't see them. I believed in them. And at night, there used to be this picture on the wall. of There were ballerinas, but they looked like fairies. And, and I loved to sort of... I thought, if I look at the fairies, everything will be all right. Um, also, with regards... You know, the stuff that we used to hear about with how fairies come in to clean homes and how they help you with cleaning. Now, I won't go into too much here about how you can communicate with these spirit realms because it's just too crazy. I know for a lot of people to think I'm just completely crackers on it. I don't care if anybody thinks I'm completely crackers anyway. Um, but I struggle a bit in my house. I love cleaning. And since I've got into my natural um, cleaning products, I love it even more because it's just so nice to think you're not using harmful chemicals. But I, have to, I do have a problem with, with clutter. Um, I'm not naturally all that tidy. I have no problem doing the garden, but a little bit of clutter does tend to accumulate in my house. The other day I thought, right, come on fairies, help me clear the clutter. I've cleared it. And this is a person who has tried all sorts of things to get motivated with clearing the clutter. Uh, tapping on it. And it's not like I'm drowning in clutter. It's just that when everywhere is tidy, the whole energy in the house feels nicer. That's Feng Shui. You know, as we go through life now, I'm a, it's easy for me to believe it because I am away with the fairies. But look around us, all sorts of things that were far more hidden <coughs> but have always been there. And now I think becoming far more clear in this dimension. Let's think about the crop circles. I mean, we've got some very, very complicated crop circles happening now. I know some of them are made in the middle of the night by people. But we've got a lot of very, very... Um, highly detailed crop circles coming down whereas we've always had crop circles in ancient medieval times they used to be called um, well I don't know the people that made them were called mowing devils there's always been circles appear but now they're getting far more complicated and whilst there's been tales and stories of all sorts of flying creatures you know from a long time angels have wings you know all sorts of things have wings but we've got now fake planes fake birds fake insects they all fly 
So, you know, there's a, is there a mishmash happening here between our world that we see with our normal eyes and and actually the other realms that we're beginning to now see a little bit more with, with our eyes and with the help of cameras, you know, that have got megapixels that can capture stuff that probably we couldn't see before on, on old-fashioned film. That's a big help. So, anyway, I'm just basically thought I'd better do something to try and sort of spread the word of what I'm of, of I'm finding. Not that I expect anyone to sort of listen or take any notice, but I'd feel that if I'd kept all these sort of interesting discoveries to myself and thoughts, it's a little bit selfish. So if anyone's listened to the end of this and, and learned anything from it, then then that's great. So have a nice day, and thanks very much. Bye.